Welcome to Madmins.com and our lab video series on Cisco ASA Firepower. You can find a complete list of ASA Firepower video on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to go through a Firepower service installation on Cisco ASA. Here we're going to assume that you either have just obtained a blank SSD as an add-on to your existing ASA, want to perform a software recovery of your corrupted Firepower service, or you have previously installed a Cisco CX service that you would like to replace with the Cisco Firepower. But if you have purchased the ASA with the Firepower bundle, most likely the service software would have already been installed. And you can just skip through the first half of this video, which is how to install the software and then go directly to the configuration setup process. Since this is our first video of this lab video series, let's spend a little bit of time looking through this lab setup and trying to familiarize ourselves, starting off with our Server VLAN, VLAN 32, the IP of 162.16.32 slash 24, the IP of dot 40 is our domain controller that we have VR services running on, such as DNS, SMTP, HTTP, so on and so forth. And at the IP of dot 107, the same VLAN, we will be installing a Cisco Firesight system that we're going to be using to manage our Firepower and the ASA. As far as the user VLAN, we have two VLANs here, VLAN 64 and VLAN 65. We're primarily going to be using our VLAN 64. We're going to be using also a Win7 test one machine as our test machine, and that is the domain computer. And right here within this green dotted circle is our Cisco ASA firewall that is connecting our inside and outside interface, VLAN 10 and VLAN 11 respectively, that we're going to be spending the majority of our time on in this video installing Firepower service. And since we are using our ASA 5515, which is the lower model of the ASA, the Firepower software service has to share the same management interface as the physical port on the ASA. So you can see here in the management interface, we also have it connected to the inside VLAN 10. And we're going to give our Firepower service the IP of .250. And the inside of the firewall IPs will be .252. Okay, this is also supposed to if you are running a bigger chassis like a 5585X, where the Firepower service is a dedicated line card, and it will also have the dedicated management port as opposed to sharing management port with the ASA. Okay, now on the outside VLANs, we have our test server, application server, also running Windows 2008 at the IP of 182.168.10.15, and then we have our internet router that will provide access to the internet for our inside network. This is going to be pretty much the lab setup that we'll be using for the rest of this lab video series, with uh, some exception that we might add a additional test server or a test machine here and there. But for the most part, as far as VLANs and the devices you see in this diagram, it wouldn't change too much. So if you plan to watch our entire video series, I definitely recommend you familiarize yourself with this setup and maybe even print out this diagram, have it right next to you as we go through our lab videos. So before we proceed with our configuration in this lab, there's certainly some prerequisites here you need to make sure that you take care of. First of all, that your ASA has the SSD or solid state drive install, and that is mandatory for you to run a Firepower service. And since it's a hardware requirement, what this also means is that this Firepower would not run on the VASA or the virtual ASA. Secondly, you need to make sure the ASA has an up-to-date code and the code that's support at minimum is 9224. So make sure that you have a ASA upgraded to the most recent code as possible. As of today, the latest one is 9.3.2, I believe. Okay, and the Firepower software that you would need for this is 531. Next, you need to make sure that all of the software services like IPS or CX are shut down if you have any of those previously installed since you cannot run multiple software services simultaneously or create conflict on or actually that you would not be able to install a second service at all. So make sure those are shut down. Next, you need to make sure that you have downloaded the boot and software images from cisco.com. And those are two separate images that you will see in a second here as we go through the install. You also need to make sure that you have either FTP or TFTP file server set up with the Firepower software uploaded to it because that's how the ASA or the Firepower will be pulling down the software. Okay, the last thing is to make sure that you have disabled HTTP inspection since it is not recommended to run HTTP inspection on the ASA concurrently while you have the Firepower service running. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and begin our installation. So what I'm going to do is to RDP into our Windows 2008 machine right here, and then we're going to SSH into uh, internal interface of our ASA firewall. So here is our remote desktop session. I'm going to use PuTTY and we kind of have the session to our firewall one right here created already. So I'm just going to double click on that. 
Gonna move that over a little bit and lock in. So username, password, and then enable. So right here, if you do show module, you see that we have all of our software services kind of shut down, although we kind of have the previous install copy of the five power, and that is currently down right now. But if you have anything or any, like IPS or CX running, then you're definitely going to have to issue the command software module, and then let's assume it's an IPS, make sure you shut them down and also do an uninstall on that. Okay, and we can do command show inventory. If you hit enter, you will see right here, our firewall our ASA here already has a solid state drive, 128 gig install. So that's part of the prerequisite. Make sure that you have that. And then the next thing you need to do is to download the boot image to the ASA flash. And let me show you right here. These are the two images that we downloaded from cisco.com. The first one has the word boot in them, and that's the boot recovery image. And the second one is the actual software itself. They're both running the same version, 5.3.1. So here, just to save us some time, we already have the boot image uploaded to out disk zero. So if you do show disk zero, and then look for the word maybe boot. Right here is our ASA SFR. The other one is just for the CX from our previous lab video, so that's fine. But this is the one that we are using right now. You can see that has been uploaded. Now to get Firepower Service to boot into the recovery mode, you issue the command software module. Module. Here we have three options. We certainly have to choose SFR for our source fired. And then issue the command recovery. First you need to point it to the image. So configured image. And it will be on our disk zero. SA SFR. If you just tap, then it will complete the rest of the file name for you. And then hit enter. And then issue command software module, module SFR, recover. And this time, instead of configured, you enter the command boot. Okay, so this is going to force our software service to boot using that boot image. So you can see right here it says module SFR will be recovered and it was certainly going to be erasing all of the configuration that's there previously. And this may take a few minutes. So let's go ahead and hit confirm at this point. If you do show module right here, you can see the status of the SFR module, software module has turned into recover. And then we're just going to have to give it a couple minutes here for it to boot back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to quickly pause the video and I'll come back once the software service has booted into the recovery mode. All right, so we give it a couple minutes, so hopefully our software service has booted back up. Let's do show module. It looks like it's still said recovery. So to get into the software service, you issue the command session, and then you specify what service you want to get into. In this case, is SFR, and then console. Okay, so it looks like we have the login prompt. So the default username password for the console is admin. And the password is admin123 with uppercase A for admin. And then enter. Just make sure you uh, type that out so you can see. So the default password is admin123 like that. And the next thing we have to do is to configure the network information. So the software service know where to or how to download the software image from the network. So we're going to issue the command setup to go through the setup process, the host name, we're going to call this one lm-sfr, I guess that's for source fired, number one. And then we want to configure IP v4 address for management, said yes. Do you want to do DSCP, said no. And our IP address is going to be 162.16.10. Let's see what we have here. We said it's going to be 250. So 250. Let's type that again. 10.250, make sure there's no typo. Subnet mass is slash 24. The gateway is 162.16.10.1, which is our internal core switch. Do we want to configure IPv6? Let's say no. Our primary DNS server IP, that would be our domain controller right here at the IP of 32.40. So 162.16.32.40. Secondary DNS server, we have none, so no. Local domain name, yes. 
and our domain name is labminutes.com. Search domain, yes, we want to configure that with the same labminutes.com. Right, for NTP, let's just use our default gateway, which is our switch. It's also acting as an NTP server. We're say to 16.10.1. Oh, I guess we have to type yes before the IP, 16.10.1, and do we have authentication? No. Let's review the change real quick. The IP is 10.250 slash 24, gateway 10.1, lab minutes, lab minutes, and 32.40 for DNS. So that should be it. Enter to apply the change. Press enter to continue. Okay. So now let's make sure that we can ping our FTP server, which is our domain control that we are RDPing into right here. So ping 172.16.32.40. I can see that is pingable. So the next step is to have the software service pull the image, software image from FTP server right here. So let me start FileZilla server. And make sure that our directory is pointing to the five power folder right here on the desktop that contains our image. So let me copy and paste the name of the image, which is this one, 531 package. And the command you need to have this guy pull down the software is system install FTP and then FTP Cisco Cisco for the user account to lock in at the IP of 172.16.32.40 and then followed by the name of the image. Enter. There you go. Looks like it paused a little bit there, but it eventually went through and started downloading the code. So you can see from the FTP console, management console in the background as well, it's downloading right now. So you can see the progress is going up. So let's give it a second for that to hit 100% and make sure there's no more errors before I'm probably gonna have to pause the video one more time. But let's wait here for a little bit. So right there, verifying, downloading, and then extracting. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. This process might take around 10 minutes or so. So I'll come back when the software is installed. So at this point, the software installation should have completed. So let me scroll up a little bit here and see what we kinda Missing out on after we have paused the video, we kind of left out with right there, software start extracting. And then it came back and prompted us to continue with the upgrade and we said yes. And then it went through the actual upgrade process and it went through a reboot. Okay, so at this point, the module should come back up. So if you do the show module, you see right here, our SourceFire RSA 5 power status is now up and up even with the data plane status. Now we're gonna session back into the module. So session, SFR console. And here at the lock-in prompt, you can see that the prompt has changed a little bit from what used to be during the recovery. See if we can find that. It was the ASA SourceFire boot, and now it has become SourceFire 3D lock-in. And the default login credential is actually changed as well. Instead of admin and admin123 that we use during the boot recovery, it's become admin and then it's the word source fire. Okay, source fire with the uppercase S for the source. Now it's asking us to accept the end user license agreement or EULA. So we're just going to space through that all the way to the end. And then we need to type in yes to accept and then immediately force you to change the password. So we're going to change the password, right? And then it's just putting you through the network setup process again. So whatever that you have configured previously has already been kind of forgotten already, but that's what's only used for the software download. Now let's go through that one more time with the IPv4. We said yes, IPv6 no. DSCP is no, so select manual. Once again, give it the IP address to the management interface, and that's 172.16.10.250. Subnet slash 24, gateway is 10.1. Fully qualify host name, and I believe we give it lm-sfr1. And 
since it's FQDM, we're going to type in the domain as well, which is labminutes.com. DNS server IP is 32.40. Domain name is labminutes.com. So we'll give it a couple seconds here for the parameter we just input to get configured. All right, and we are back at a prompt, which is a slightly different. There's no actual prompt anymore. It's just the greater than sign. And there's a message right here. The sensor must be managed by the defense center. What's telling you is you need to connect this mesh device to the defense center for it to be configured. And here's the command that we would use in a later video to add this guy to our management server. Okay, let's take a quick look at the command of the question mark. You see that there's a whole lot of command options that you can do here other than just uh, option two configured. And that's just to add the sensor to the management server. But that's pretty much it. You got exit, expert, help, history, lockout, and then there's some show command that you can do as well. But those probably just a, for troubleshooting purposes with a show network, show manager, which is something that we'll use later on to check the connection status back to the management center. And obviously there's show time, show summary. Once the device is managed by the Fireside management server, then you rarely will come back here and actually use the command line itself. So at this point, we are pretty much done with five power service install on the ASA. As you can see, the installation is very similar to the Cisco CX. If you had a prior experience with the Cisco CX, with one main difference is that CX can actually operate in standalone mode without having a separate management server for the CX is prime security manager server. While the five power service actually required or mandates a need to have a separate management server, which is in this case a Firesight management. Okay, so our Fire Power service is now ready to go. So the next step for us will be to install the Firesight management server. And that should wrap up our video on ASA Fire Power service installation. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.